What's up, y'all? I got a banger from Man Guide. Let's get straight into it. What do you bring to the table? Everything. I got two kids, you know what I mean? So I'd, everything. If you're willing to be, provide for my kids, then everything. Everything like what? My kids, my life, my mental health, everything. Like, everything. Everything you want to know about me, I'll bring to the table, for sure. I'm going to keep it a buck. I thought she was going to say, I am the table. Shots fired! Shots fired! She does look like she brings everything to the table, though. <laughs> keep it a buck. <laughs> crazy to me bro my do you kids, listen to what i like bro, bro, bro my kids my mental health what is that going to do for my pocketbook nothing your kids are a liability they're not an asset let me know in the comments is is what she mentioned is that good enough for you i'm gonna tell you right now it ain't good enough for me brother do you listen to what our young women what comes out of their mouths these days and they ask somebody what do you bring to the table so look at me now i am the table what do you bring to the table <laughs> Our women don't say, ah, I have brains, I can do this, I can help you take your business to the next level. They think this is the table. I have brains, I have nyash. True. When he asked me, what do I bring to the table? Okay, here we go. What even is that? We didn't ask for, for any of that. Walking way too close. I'll just slow down. Yeah. And this feels even creepier. Yes, I'm passing. So many men can relate to this because so many men just want you to be comfortable. The worst thing that they can be called is a creep. This is facts. I'm pretty good at talking to people in the street, but I walk fast. So, uh, yeah, being called a creep is pretty bad. I don't think I've ever been called a creep, though. Maybe by cast, but like not in actual reality of a girl actually calling me a creep. But I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Have you guys been called a creep? I'm assuming most men have probably been called a, been called a creep in their lives. Um, it seems situation. like more and more men are having to deal with these women just shaming them in public, which sucks because then, you know, everybody's got to watch you get made fun of. One to save you, policemen and firemen. I do not accept a coffee or a walk as a possible date option and neither should you. First of all, I'm not a dog that needs to be walked. Second, I have an espresso machine at home, works fabulous. We're not doing drinks either. You're going to try to get me drunk and take me back home. No. Wait, are who hurt you, honey? <laughs> Did, did Chad take you out and get you drunk? I remember back in my day when a woman, you could just take her out to a simple dinner date. And then before you know it, y'all are dating. And then you could just go and meet her family. And then y'all could start a family. But nowadays women have just lost their way entirely. Can't find a good woman right now. It's like a needle in a haystack. Boy, you can't find nothing these days. They can't even cook or clean doing dinner you're gonna pick me up we're gonna come to the restaurant we're gonna see your table manners we're gonna see what you order we're gonna see do you hold your chopsticks? this is why you're alone shots fired shots fired that's why a lot of these women are alone they don't realize this they have all these unreal expectations and then they wonder where are all the good men at it's just no man's land correctly we're just gonna you know study you a bit okay so dinner it is don't worry based on good lord her lips are so big it's just not attractive to me. I can just tell that you have a really, table. I can tell you have a really close relationship with your doctor. Men away. What do you bring to the table? A chest piece. <laughs> what, the, what is that? Is that a goat's head? What is that? I'm not going to answer this question. This is just something that I wouldn't answer in a date. I'm not going to answer sure, here. Fine. I'm not going to answer. Or how many books I've read. <laughs> okay. Um, well, it's that power what, dynamic. Here, what do you expect men to bring to the table? Integrity, clarity, consistency, a strong connection to divinity, not necessarily religion, but some kind of purpose based lifestyle. So, what is the female equivalent of that? The same. Then why wouldn't you just say that at the table? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we all want to bring single. Well, I don't like that accountability stuff. Divinity. What is that? What does divinity even mean? What are we talking about, dude? What, what, what? I've never even heard that one. Divinity, 
It really bothers me when I see feminine men. I know the modern dating scene sucks, but so does getting hurt physically. Have you ever been the victim of a personal injury case? Every year as an image consultant, I meet so many different types of clients, and a lot of them are recovering from injuries or accidents, ranging from car accidents to workplace injuries. And I was extremely surprised to see how many people lost their personal injury cases, which is why I'm here to talk about Morgan and Morgan. America's largest injury law firm. They specialize in a wide variety of personal injury cases, and they have won thousands of big cases. And if you do end up working with them, they will fight for the money you deserve. Just recently, Morgan & Morgan secured verdicts of $12 million in Florida and $26 million in Philly. That's up to 40 times the highest insurance offer. And I'm telling you, your case could be worth millions. And the best part is it's all free unless you win your case. If you have also been a victim of a personal injury or a serious accident, you can visit www.forthepeople.com slash Levi. Found in the description below where you can start your free claim today. Uh, women nowadays are so high maintenance. What do you bring to the table? Oh boy, I have a lot to say on this. Let's go. First of all, women bring emotional support. We're there to provide comfort and a safe space to come home to. We bring compassion, care, and... Does she seem like she's bringing a safe space to come home to? Compassion, care, and healing? Let me keep it a buck. Not really seeing it. Healing. We bring beauty and femininity. Cause don't lie bro, you also take pride when your girl is a 10. Your ego gets boosted too. Wait, somebody said you was a 10? Shots fired! Shots fired! All your friends think your girlfriend is hot. Don't lie bro. We're also there to give you a second opinion. To stop you from doing stupid shit. Cause we have your best interest at heart. And we want to support your goals, your plan, your vision. And on top of that, we bring- Wait, is she this based and still alone? <laughs> Intimacy, closeness, empathy, understanding, guidance. So the freaking table! Cause I've seen y'all men comfort each other. And it is the lamest thing ever. Aw oh, bro, I had a bad day at work. Aw oh, man, I'm sorry to hear that. Take it easy, yeah? Here, have a can of beer. Oh now would you prefer that? Or or Aw oh, baby, do you wanna talk about it? Tell me what else can I do to make you feel better? If you'd rather be comforted by your bros and a can of beer, then go marry each other. What? Or better yet, go marry the fucking table. And mind you, women nowadays can afford to pay our own rent and bills. We can buy our own meals. <laughs> and can still afford to go on shopping sprees to pamper Stupid. ourselves with cute clothes, makeup products, and beauty treatment. So if we can already do that for ourselves, I guess the question is, what do you bring to the table? Period. Okay, I love you always. Bye. Sounds good. <laughs> How is she so close but so far away at the same time? She was based in a lot of the things she was saying, but then she turns around in her little lonely apartment and there's nobody there. It's just her and a phone that she's screaming at. Oh my lord, that's crazy to me. What are you bringing to this I ain't no so waitress, cool I ain't bringing nothing. Me for myself, <laughs> I work a nine to five. I'm a single mother, I take care of my kid. I You're a single mother. You said I would ask you. Cheers, at least she said it. I pay my own bills. But that's everything that you do for yourself. What do you bring into the table as far as a relationship? You're an adult. Everything you listed is you just being a human adult. So I expect you to be independent. Just like I'm independent, Ace is independent, Jew is independent. We do everything for ourselves. Like a lot of women's personality trait is that I'm strong, independent, don't need no man. Of course, that's not showing me anything. Bro, I was talking, I was talking to Cass earlier. We went to like TJ Maxx. And I was like, babe, you're just a strong, independent woman. You don't need no man. She goes, uh-uh, I don't like that. I'm, she goes, I'm a strong, dependent woman, and I need a man. <laughs> I was like, yes. Yes. She's like, why would a girl want to work? Like, Cass is so, she's so confused by this movement, because she's like, why would a girl want to work and go to work every day and pay your own bills and be, like, in this masculine mindset and have to compete and have to have all these responsibilities? Like, Cass has to worry about 0% of the finances, and she absolutely loves it. She's thriving. Sitting in there watching anime right now. She's a complete weeb. I absolutely love it. Dude, if you can get a girl that's really an anime and hot, bro, you struck gold. I'm being for real. That you would offer a long-term successful relationship. So if I rephrase the triggering statement of what do you bring into the table in a more acceptable way, it would sound like this. So as a woman, what attributes do you possess that would improve our relationship and improve my life? What do you bring into the table? 
And because a lot of women have been conditioned to believe that their worth and value is directly predicated on how much money she makes, how much she owns, what kind of degree she has. When you ask them this question, those are the type of responses that you get. And that's not what you bring to the table as a woman. It has taken me years to understand my value and the significance of my energy and aura as a woman. So now if someone was to ever ask me that question, here is how I would answer. Okay. Yeah, I own a business and I own a home, but those are not my greatest assets. My greatest assets is that I understand sacrifice, hard work. I understand commitment. I understand financial literacy and the importance of building a legacy and starting generational wealth. My mindset is what got me the things that I have. That's an asset. The world is harder. You got to give kudos when it's due, man. She's crushing it enough so i have really worked hard to be a positive energy in the world that is what i bring to a relationship when you are out fighting the world i want you to enjoy coming home i want to be mm. your peace and your comfort i want to be the person that speaks life into you the world is tearing you down but i'm here to build you back up two heads are better than one Teamwork makes the dream work. Those are things that I live by every day. So I understand that I need to be in a relationship for me to create the lifestyle that I want for my family. So understanding that we are better together than apart, that's what I bring to a relationship. Mm. Yeah, I cook and clean and I know how to make a house a home, but I do it out of love. So I'm able to feed my family love from the inside out when they eat my food. When you come home and you sense the energy that that house has been taken care of with love, that's what I bring to the table. Mm. I want to be welcoming to you. That's what I bring to the table. Preach. You ain't going to get that everywhere. Mm -mm. She only gets part of it. Man, she, she did a great job. She did an absolutely fantastic job. I wish more women would see that and be like, yes, absolutely. Because as men, and I say this all the time, but we have to go out in the world and create our value, whereas most women think they're born worth theirs. But I agree with a lot of the statements. We're better together, together we're better. You know, like having that familial slash teamwork bond where a woman understands that she needs to be your piece and not a piece of the problem. Whereas a lot of women, when you get home, they just want to nitpick what you haven't done and call out the inadequacies that you have and the deficiencies that you have and say, why didn't you do this? Why haven't you done that? When a woman can speak inspiration and positivity into a man, mm, watch the places he'll go. Because I'll be honest, man, before I met Cass, I was doing okay. I was doing all right. But when I got, dude, a good woman is a superpower, man. I got Cass in my life. And then before you know it, I'm doubling my income. I'm really you know trying things out of my comfort zone and she was always there to support me so like a good woman really can't help you out a lot but it's really hard to find a good one that's what a woman brings to the table do i you have this question because they bought into feminism let's go back do you see these guys that ask what a woman brings to the table do i see them oh hell yes because i'm one of the ones that asks all the time <laughs> and like yet i never get an answer maybe this time i will let's see what she has I to think say his channel is men need to be heard shall we and they ask it seriously i'm convinced that men that ask that question it's because they never met a woman yet that they are you wearing the fake eyelashes filter i can't even take you serious now super wanted <laughs> what super wanted as opposed to wanted i guess there's a difference i don't know what it is but this ought to be good that or they're gay and i can't be convinced otherwise <laughs> oh dear lord they're gay if a man asks a woman what she's Dude, the going homophobia amongst these women is crazy to me they will be so fast to call a dude gay if he doesn't just simp it's so wild to me to offer him in a relationship he's gay yeah. not that there's anything wrong with that oh my uh, uh let's continue you're a man and you're super into a woman what does the woman bring for you to the table the fact that she's exclusively yours and you wanted her bad enough the fact that your desire of wanting her has been fulfilled by having her and having her exclusively or to put it another way nothing i mean literally nothing well it's just uh desire it's just one aspect of your personality 
it's very superficial. Her body's yours. Like this sounds more like a piece of property than it does a relationship. Other than he gets graced with her presence, which yeah. I guess she thinks is of some sort of value to a man. And that's why and she's I alone. think I can safely say on behalf of most, if not all men, your presence isn't going to matter that much to us. No. Unless you're bringing something of real value to us. Mm -hmm. That's what she brings to the table. So as I said... And I love it. It's always these women that are alone. <laughs> that always say... <laughs> and that's what she brings. Honey, come on. Nothing burger. Ladies, if you're watching this, I hope you take heed of what I'm about to say. Because it'll save you a lot of lonely nights and a lot of wondering about where are all the guys and why aren't they asking me out. And I'm not trying to insult or demean anyone. But this mindset is why guys are walking away in droves. This sense of entitlement, this sense of self-worth that today's women have that they think simply gracing us with their presence is all they need to do. Yet they've got a whole list of things that we need to fulfill for them. Here's a hint for you, ladies. Everything she said she can provide, we can get from a dog. And we can get it without the drama, <laughs> without having to spend a ton of money. Well, here's the thing, dude. If I want somebody to clean my house, I'll get them made. Um, if I want somebody to uh, cook me meals, I'll just hire a chef. If I want somebody to buck me, I'll just get a prosy. You know what I'm saying? Most women literally have no hobbies or real skill sets. Not much else That's to true. add. This guy really sums it up perfectly. And I'm sure he's seen feminism in all its glory over the years. Love my dogs too. I see you watching my Instagram stories. You miss me, don't you? Nah, I just swipe on stories randomly. <laughs> no, you don't. Just say it. I got a nose job. I started going to the gym. I've improved financially and physically. You must miss me. Trust me, I don't. Bro, bro, have y'all ever had that? You break up with a girl. It's like almost every girl's like cop out when you break up with them. I remember in college, I broke up with a girl. We maybe dated four weeks. I broke up with her. And then, like, the next day, she's, like, decked out in all this Nike gear. Talking about, I'm going to the gym now. It's like, why wouldn't you go into the gym before? <laughs> you think now that I think I think that you go to the gym, I'm going to be like, oh, I need her back. Bro, that is so stupid. But women do this all the time. You think, because I got a nose job. Honey, just, just tell us that you're not over this guy. Just tell us that you're not over this guy. Look, it says Kate has the vomit. <laughs> but good for you. I just saw your stories a few days ago, you're still the same guy, I thought after we broke you were going to start taking care of yourself and stuff, but somehow you're still a loser amount. Bro, that that also happens to me, shame, insult, guilt, and they need to be right, right? They need to shame you and make themselves feel better. I remember uh, the same girl that I broke up with, she was like, it's okay, my friend said that you're going to be fat by the time you're 24, I'm 33 and I'm in the best shape of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Who's laughing now? I love it, dude. Thanks. You're not over me yet I can tell, but it's never too late to change yourself. If you want me back just say it. Maybe I'll think about it and give you a chance. Absolutely nah, not. No, I don't want you. No you do. You're just acting hard to get. And this isn't good for you cause no girl in the world would want to date a loser like you. Probably shouldn't even have texted you in the first place. But you did. You're completely right. Why you really just proved to me that you just never had feelings for me. How can you be so cold to the person who truly loved you and cared for you? <laughs> I didn't mean to come off as rude or anything. I'm really sorry, but can we sort this out? <laughs> I'm going to be honest now. I really miss you. It just seems like you're the perfect guy for me. I love it. Okay, cool. I knew you also <laughs> missed me. Haha. Ha. You were just waiting for me to make a move. So we're basically back together now, right? <laughs> Absolutely not. The low IQ manipulation attempts. Bro, paired it with is. The oh, my God. The good old bait and switch. Sometimes it works. What, what, is, what does he say about the sex panther in... Uh... <laughs> in Anchorman, 60% of the time it works 90% of the time. ...to go on a date, but I learned Wait, what's some she talking about being on a date? Okay, I'm getting ready to go on a date, but I learned some information today that feels illegal to know. I was talking to one of my guy friends about love bombing, and he goes, well... That is a red flag. Guy friends? Absolutely not. Yeah, that sounds like the penny method. I was like, the penny method? Love there bombing. are methods? So he starts explaining it to me and he goes, okay, imagine a girl is a piggy bank, which interesting analogy, but hear me out. In order to get her interested, obviously at first you have to be feeding her hundred dollar bills, but putting in hundred dollar bills is a lot of work and you don't always want to be doing that. So eventually you reduce it to 90. Now she's going to feel the decrease in effort, but it's only 10%. So if she tries to bring it up, she's going to sound crazy at this point. Now here's where it gets sick. The next thing you do 
is you move it back up to 95. Now, instead of feeling like she lost five, which is how she would feel if you went directly from 100 to 95, suddenly she feels like she's gained five, but you are still putting in 5% less effort. Basically, you just keep repeating this cycle and weaning her off your effort until you get to the point where you're giving her pennies and suddenly she's excited to receive a nickel. The idea that men might actually think like this makes me so afraid. Like, is this boy math? Because I don't like it. <laughs> Anyways, be safe out there, ladies. I think the takeaway message in all of this is that we should never be accepting anything less than $100 bills. <laughs> Those long cat nails. Good Lord. I've never heard the term love bombing. Let me know in the comments. Have you actually heard of that? I've never heard that term. What I would do, and this, is, this was my strategy when I was a young buck in the dating game. This is what I would do, man. So I would find... I would find a chick, you know, we would start talking for a little bit, but my entire goal was to get her obsessed with me as fast as possible. So what I would do is I would do everything in my power to make her feel as special as I could. Texting her in the morning, texting her throughout the day, texting her at night, constant communication, constant validation, hanging out all the time, bringing her things. And then once you've gotten to that part where you can just see that little twinkle in her eye that she's like obsessed in the way that she looks at you, I would just cut it all off. I wouldn't even do the penny method. I wouldn't go like 5% more. And I, that's too much math for me. That was too much. But it was my goal in the first like month, honestly, even two weeks, get them completely obsessed with me and then just retreat entirely. And then they were like, what's going on? We were so into each other. It was so great and blah, blah, blah. And of course, you're, you're, you're mixing in the physical intimacy as well. Um, so that's that has to be there. If that's not there, you, re you really can't get her locked in. Um, but I would do that. I would just get girls obsessed with me and then just drop them off. Like completely good, just go no effort. And then they're still there clinging on. And then you can go and do the, the things that you want to do. You can go see other girls. You can, you know, go hang out with your friends. You can ditch her. I was pretty bad, man. I, I, I don't I don't condone doing that stuff now because <laughs> looking back, it was pretty bad. But hell, I do things that get results. And uh, this stuff worked. I on the date. My fiance asked for a one-sided open marriage. So I canceled the wedding. Two weeks ago, we were two weeks away from getting married. She asked me to go to therapy with her. She one, was already a seeing a one-sided open marriage, bro. Are you, are you saying that your wife was a She's a runner, she's a track star. Therapist on her own and wanted me to go with her and have a talk before the wedding, where we could be completely honest with one another. That sounded a little weird to me. I thought we were already completely honest with one another. After all, we were getting married in two weeks, right? Also, God. she was super protective about her therapy sessions and didn't really talk about them. I have never met her therapist. So to be invited there all of a sudden seemed a little out of place to me. The day comes, and I go there. But out of self-preservation, I had my phone open and recording any audio. My fiancé was already there. I had to wait 20 minutes before I was invited in. The therapist greets me and shakes my hand. We have small talk. She tells me I am not at all the way my fiancé described me. I think she is trying to compliment me. Then she looks at my fiancé and tells her this may be harder than we thought. That absolutely weirded me out. But I am a calm and collected individual, and I don't react. Just keep that dumb smile on my face we all have in awkward situations. So the therapist starts talking. Has a small speech I don't care to repeat. My fiancé takes my hand as the therapist starts telling me that we live in a modern world, and that my fiancé wants us to have a non-conventional marriage moving forward. I smile, I am not sure what the hell that means, through my mind, I am thinking she wants to talk about how she will not be a slave to her husband, she will not sacrifice her work life, etc. modern woman and girl power and all that. Nope, she is actually talking about how once we get married, she wants to be free to sleep with other men. The other non-traditional type of marriage, but she loves me a lot and would not be comfortable with me having the same benefits because she <laughs> you can't make this stuff up dude she would be too heartbroken knowing that i find other women attractive and that one of them could steal me from her so i let them finish talking they were very fluent and they got more confident talking probably empowered by my lack of reaction and because i wasn't saying anything this was definitely something they had rehearsed i then asked the therapist if she was licensed this by her reaction was not what she expected to be the first thing coming out of my mouth she said yes so I told her to explain to my fiancé why we would not be getting married anymore, and why we would not continue being a couple starting immediately. I wish them good luck, and left the office. Now, I want good to report man. the therapist. This is all too common in marriage. Wow, that's absolutely insane. Well, and dude, my opinion on all that is like polyamory and stuff like that. It usually just never works. And it, you, in the small percentage of times that it does, it only works with like the Amish communities or uh, what is it, Mormon, where it's like one guy and seven women. It just usually doesn't work when it's women can sleep with whoever they want and men can sleep with whoever they want. Like, what's the point of even having a relationship? I've known, I've known people 
that in their adult lives, not college, but in their adult lives, they were like poly or they were in an open relationship. And almost all the time, those relationships fail. Let me know in the comments. Let me know in the chat. Do you know anybody that's in a successful, open or polyamorous relationship? I'll be honest. I don't know a single person. I don't know anybody. But now I know people that have like dabbled in the threesomes, like bringing another girl but never bringing in another guy. But I just don't, I don't, I don't, I think the success rate of those is very, very low. It's hard enough to be in a relationship. Cass, Cass has asked me before, like, would you want another girl? No, I don't want to have to deal with another headache. Stupid. One woman's enough. I don't need another one. Good Lord. To be honest, I don't think guys and girls can be friends. They can't. It's just oh, the only all. way they can is if the chick is ugly. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way they can. Oh. No, at all. Listen, there is a formula. You want to hear it? Yeah, let me hear it. Okay. If they're both hot, they can't be friends. Because they're both hot. Like, you're just mm -hmm. going to want each other. If you're both ugly, it can work. Yeah. Because you don't really have that many options and you already like each other. So then mm -hmm. you're just like, okay, you love me. I love you. Let's, mm -hmm. like, have a family. Yeah. But then if one is hot and one is not, it depends who's the hot one. So if the guy is like hot. Like the reacher and the settler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If the guy's hot, I really think because men are visual creatures, like, mm -hmm. it can't work if he's not attracted to the woman. So that friendship can work but facts if the girl is really beautiful and the guy is not it can still work the friendship can work no sorry they'll get married because if he has a good personality and he's successful and rich she'll mm -hmm. settle the look department and she'll just marry him so that's my equation on that i mean that's pretty calculaic no it's true like i'm there's a study on it i don't know who did it i just made that yeah up. okay <laughs> science there's a study I mean, you really it. value science do I? <laughs> Men and women just can't be friends. That's just, it is what it is. A lot of talking for not. Yeah, men and women can't be friends. They just can't. It's impossible. One of them has to be ugly. And most of the time, it's the guy. But if the girls beat, we, we saw in a previous episode, this girl was, she was mid, the guy was a pretty good looking guy, and she literally flew this guy out to Vegas, had a hotel room, and they didn't do anything together. He's like, we're just friends. It's the only way that a guy and a girl can work where they're actually really just friends. But most of the time, it's always, what is, what is the guy called? What call, called the Reacher and the, I can't remember what he called it. I got to go back because I think that was actually a pretty good term that he used. And she'll just marry him. So that's my. What do you call it? And if one is hot and one is not, it depends who's the hot one. So if the guy is like hot. Like the Reacher and the Settler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Reacher and the Settler. Oh, okay. The Reacher. And, I like that. The Reacher and the Settler. But yeah, man, I've never had a girl that's just a friend. I would even tell girls in college, I don't, I don't have friends that are girls. If I needed a friend, I'd go get a homie if I needed to. I don't, I'm not friends with girls. And I think in the beginning, if you, let's say you're dating a new chick. She's like, you're really nice. I think we can just be friends. I'm like, you know what? Let's just end this now because I'm not looking to be friends with no girl. I don't want to be friends with any woman. So let's just end this now. If you think that I'm, I'm, a fr I'm giving you friend vibes, let's just end it now. And she's like, what? Wait, what? No. Like, we, sh can, we can just continue to get to know each other. What's wrong with that? Well, let's, just, let's just keep hanging out. Mm -mm. If you don't see me, in, if you don't see any potential with me physically, intimately, as like a boyfriend, I'm not saying I want to be your man, but if you don't see me in that light at all, I'm, I'm out. I'm completely out. I'm not going to entertain this at all. But when you set that line in the sand, most of the time, women want you more it's like telling a kid don't press the little red button what do they want to do they want to press that little red button <laughs> but a lot of guys it's really hard for them to take the cookie off the plate because the thing is they don't got a lot of cookies on the plate but guys you got to know your worth i'm not the best looking dude i'm a six at best the thing is my personality got me way further than my looks did i didn't get any modeling casting calls nobody was reaching out to be on the cover of esquire magazine I'm okay, I'm mid. You stick me in a crowd with a bunch of other guys, eh. I'm not really sticking out. I don't have strong cheekbones. I don't, you know, I don't have the look. It's just as simple as that. And if I did have the look, I'd be in, uh, what is it? I'd, I'd be in vogue, but I'm not. I'm not. So you gotta know your strengths and you gotta double down on them. What was good for me is growing up, I always hung out with a guy that was like 6'8", sculpted from stone, freak athlete, chiseled i'm talking about this guy didn't have to work out and he was shredded he just had insane genetics he's a really good looking dude but as soon as he opened his mouth it was just straight up like he had no game couldn't talk to girls his confidence was through the floor because the thing is he was so used to being approached that he never had to work on his game now flip that i'm hanging out with him girls are approaching him I want some of that attention. So what did I do? I start running my mouth. I start bumping my gums. That's how I got good at the game. And I figured out what worked really early on. 
and I did things that got results. I didn't do things that were nice or moral or ethical. I did things that got results. And ruffling girls' feathers got results. Giving them odd compliments. Saying like, it looks like your cousin does your eyebrows. <laughs> what does that even mean? Your cousin does your eyebrows. You know what? I bet, I bet, I bet like one of your distant family members is on government assistance. <laughs> what does that even mean? We really don't know. You know what? It looks like when you came out the womb, you was already walking. Like, what does that mean? What does that mean? And it's up, it's up to them. But like, the thing is, is if you can be funny, if you can be interesting and have some sort of personality, women will be gravi gravitated towards you. That's why I put out the ebook, The Four Pillars of Personality. These are four things that I worked on, and unbeknownst to me, I worked on for years and years. But once I finally figured out, I'm like, oh, it's just these four things that you put together and you're irresistible to women and you're also respected by men. It's like, it's like, it's like the perfect storm. But a lot of men don't even get to figure that out because it's a lot of trial and error. And I believe that the position I was put in, in this place in time, being an only child by a single mom, being super poor, I just had to be extroverted to make friends. I could have been introverted, but I was super extroverted. I know people that are my same age that are ridiculously introverted and highly successful. Some of them not. I know a guy that just got out of prison, did like three or four years, my exact same age. It's just the polarity of it all is absolutely crazy to me. It's all about decisions. Little, little decisions day by day is what gets you to where you want to be. I don't know how I got on that tangent, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to cop the ebook, The Four Pillars of Personality. Makes you irresistible to women and respected by men. Loki, did you have a good time? Did you have a good time? <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed today's episode, man. I will see you guys tomorrow and uh, peace.